Halleluja. 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 We do brought Yahweh for another day that he has made. He has given us all life here today. He's given us breath. And he has lifted us up out of our beds. Even though sometimes I know the joints may be a little stiff, sometimes a little sore, but yet Yahweh, he gives us the strength to move on and to press and to do his will. Hallelujah. We do brought Yahweh for all those that listen to my video live stream tonight, those that have traveled here to be here with us at Teshua. Yahweh Barak, you all. Um, I have just a simple message for us tonight, Israel. Y'all. Just a simple word, but yet it's a word that is so powerful. And it's used throughout Torah multiple times. It is the word lift or room. Lift. Lift up. It has so many uh, verses that it backs up Yisrael. It's so powerful. Even knowing that Yahweh, as he simply commands us Yisrael, to lift up our voices? Should we find that hard in the house of Yisrael? Knowing all that Almighty Yahweh has done for us? To lift up our hands? Even Yahweh lifts his hands, Yisrael. We, we as a nation, we as a people, and there are those that even teach that we should not do these things in the house of Yah. But Yahweh, he commands us to lift up our hands. Without wrath. Without sin. Hallelujah. And we also must lift up our levim, our lev, and our nephesh before him. What is that? Well, when you lift something up, is it not for all to see? It is not hid. If you are decorating your home, the things that you delight in or you feel has a great value, you want those things up front. Somewhat at eye level, even above eye level. Because they have a high place. And those things you really don't want seeing, you kind of put them in the low places. Or you even put them back in your closet. You don't want nobody to see that. But Yahweh, he declares unto Yisrael for us to lift up. Even our countenance unto him. To lift up our eyes and look towards the hill. To Mount Zion. New Jerusalem. From which our help and our help cometh from. And it cometh from Almighty Yahweh. Can we receive the things that Yahweh commands of us if we do not take the proper steps? Things that are just so simple. If we just take time out of the day to just look up into the Shemayans. To lift up our hands. And we'll be honest with ourselves, we don't do it, Yisrael, as we should. Hallelujah. Even to the point we lift up his name, his shame. Where there is all power, all honor. It has been established and it has been written in the lives and on the foreheads of his people, Yisrael. But we must lift up. We must yada. We must make Yahweh's name known with our voices yes. and our actions, yes. how we live. Yes. What you do lifts up the name of Almighty, Almighty Yahweh, or our actions bring him low, Israel. Yes. So we must room. We must lift up. Yes. Have not Yahweh lifted us up today? Yes. Are not we here at this present time, this present hour, Israel? Yes. Despite what we go through and what we have experienced, Yahweh has brought us this far by Yimuna. And he has lifted us up, Yisraya. He has plucked us up out of the pit of sin. Out of our own blood. Wherefore our navel cord was not properly cut, Yisraya. Dying slowly. But yet he reached down. And he lifted us up as a people. And as a house and as a nation. Why? Why has he done that? That his name may be exalted. That his name may be lifted up, Yisrael. So let me begin simply in Bereshit Genesis chapter 7 concerning Noah and the ark. 
We have heard of the account time after time. But if Noah did not obey Almighty Yahweh in the most simplest and pacific things, then there would have been no way that the ark could have been lifted up above the waters and had been set on the course above the floods. He would not have been able to leave everything behind that Yahweh commanded him to leave behind. Him and his sons and those that were with him, even to the animals, if he did not obey Yahweh, what he had commanded him to the specific specs of the building of this ark or of this vessel that is the Yasha of the salvation. And if we were to look at this example of Yahshua HaMashiach, if Yahshua did not do all that Yahweh had commanded him, there would be no salvation or no Yasha for Yisrael. We will not be able at this time to be lifted up above the floodwaters of the nations and of the peoples of this world as they seek to draw us down, to drown us, Yisrael, and to destroy us. That's what the nations do. That is what the course of Satan, that's what he has set out to do, to seek, kill, and destroy that which belongeth unto Almighty Yahweh. Yet Yahweh has allowed through Yahshua HaMashiach an ark that shall lift us up above the floodwaters of the enemy and what the world tried to present unto us, Yisrael, that we may be Yahshua in these last evil days. Hallelujah. Are we in the ark today, Yisrael? Yes. Yahweh has lifted us up. So let me read here this account in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And Yahweh, he said unto Noah, Come you and call all your house into this ark, this ark of safety, or this covenant that I have declared unto you. He said, For you have I seen Sadiq, righteous. You have been set apart. I have called you out. I have given you the mishpah on my Torah and the revelation of that which is to come. He said, I have seen you, Sadiq, before me in this perverted generation. Are we not in a perverted generation in this hour, Yisrael? Has not Yahweh called us out? Are we not the elect, the zira, the seed of Almighty Yahweh? Verse 2. For every clean beast you shall take to you by seven, a male and a female, his female, all of the beasts that are not clean by two, a specific commandment. Those things which are clean, Yahweh commanded by seven, which is an, ex, uh, an example of Yahweh's completeness and his cleanliness. And those things which were unclean, he said, just by two, the male and his fa female. Verse 3, don't you know if even, if Noah didn't obey Almighty Yahweh, even in this, that the ark would have sank Israel? Don't you know that Yahweh in his foreknowledge knew what this ark would hold, the weight it would hold, and how much it would carry? If, if, if Noah would have uh, disobeyed Almighty Yahweh in one element, then there would not have been no salvation, Israel. But Yahweh, he gave Noah the ability and the mind and the lab and also the tool to do everything. Hallelujah. Just as he has given us, Yisrael, Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. that we may be able to obey Yahweh and call all things. He said, of the fowls also of the air by seven, the male and the female, to keep the zira or the sea alive upon the face of the old lamb. For yet seven days will I cause it to rain among the old lamb forty days and forty nights. Is this not Yahweh speaking, Israel? Yeah. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the old lamb. Yahweh said, I will cause it to be consumed. I'm going to wipe it out. I'm going to cleanse it through from off the face of the old lamb of the earth. And Noah, he did according to some that Yahweh commanded. What? That he said all. That he said that. So did I, I, I quoted that wrong, did I not? He said, Cole. That Noah did call all that Yahweh had commanded him. It's important, Yisrael, that we do call, that we do all that Yahweh commanded us to do. Because this is the only way that we are going to be able to enter in and to abide in this ark of safety, Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 6. 
And it says in Noah, he was 600 years old when the flood waters was upon the Olam. And Noah, he went in, he bowled, he entered into. Him, his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. It says, of clean beasts and of that which are not clean, of the fowls, and of everything that creeps upon the Olam, there went in two by two to Noah and to the ark, the male and the female, as Yahweh had commanded Noah. What do we allow into our ark, Israel? Not only was this an ark or a ship of safety, but it's also a bayit, or a place of dwelling, a place of, of, of comfort, a shelter from the storm and from the, the rain, Israel. So we must obey Yahweh's commandments completely and all that we do, Israel. That we will bring into his bayit everything that he commands and not without or add anything to his mishpah, his Torah. Verse 10, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood was upon the Olam. Verse 11. In the 600 year of Noah's life, it says, in the second month and the 17th day of the month, in the same day were all the fountains of the great depths, or those fountains that was deep inside the Olam or the earth, they were broken up. They were set loose, Yisrael. There were no holds upon them. Yahweh, he opened the gates of the waters that they may flow. The fountains of, great, of the great deep were broken up. And the windows also of the Shemayim, they were open. So the rain also, the waters flowed from above Yisrael. And the rain was upon the Olam for 40 days and 40 nights. And in the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Yaphat the sons of Noah, their wives. This happened on the same day, Israel. Yes, yes. They didn't enter into this ark of safety and then weeks down the road, mm -hmm. the fountains of waters were broken. But it says the self same day, Israel. Yes. Should we not pay attention to the day that we are in and the hour, Israel? Yes. For we must be ready today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now is the acceptable time yes. of the salvation of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. And the three wives and his sons with them into the ark of safety. They and every beast after its kind and all the cattle after its kind. And every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth after its kind. And every fowl after its kind. And every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark. Two and two of all flesh. Wherein is the root of the breath of Almighty Yahweh of life. And they went in, male and female of all flesh, and Yahweh had commanded him, and Yahweh shut them in. Yahweh, he shut the door. There was not left any more salvation or Yahshua for any other once Yahweh shut the door of this ark. It was not by the hands of Noah or by the strength of his sons or by the strength of any brute beast that shut that door. It was almighty Yahweh. It's, all, it's only Yahweh that shuts the door in this hour, Yisrael. And it's Yahweh that adds unto by Yisrael daily. It's also Yahweh that cleanses his house. He takes away Yisrael. But Yahweh, he shut them in in verse 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the Olam. And it says that the waters, they increase. Have we not seen, even in the pictures, in the newspaper, or accounts, on the news, when the flood waters come in from the storms, from the hurricanes, nothing withstands the water. They try to set up their borders, or what they call their dunes, the sand dunes, to somewhat subdue the water, but it does not subdue the water, Israel. Nothing that man builds can subdue the waters when it floods, Israel. Only Yahweh can control that. So the waters, they increased. And not only did they increase and destroy many, 
But these same waters, it says, it lifted up or it bared up the ark. Hallelujah. This ark of safety. But you know, it's Yahshua that bears us up, Yisrael. It's not by our own strength, our own intellect, our riches, which we have none in the physical Yisrael, that shall sustain us, but only the ark of safety that Yahweh has ordained that we may be saved, Yisrael. And it also says, and it was what? Lift up above the earth. So it is Yahweh that lifts us up, Yisrael. It's not by the hands of men or our own strength that sustains us, that separates us from the world, or that delivers us from the flood waters, Yisrael. Because truly, Yisrael, if we didn't have this ark of safety in Yahshua HaMashiach, we could not stand in these last evil days. We'll be overcome by the flood waters. Are yes. oh, the flood waters, have they been sent by Almighty Yahweh? Sure they have. In the form of trials, circumstances. Sometimes we may forget that these things are the will of Yahweh to strengthen the house. But yet he has made a way for us, Israel, a way of escape. He has not left us to drown or to be destroyed, Israel. But he has made us to be a people of strength that we may stand and that we may show forth his praise in these last and evil days, Israel. Let me somewhat describe this word lift or room. It is to rise, to rise up or to be high, even lofty, to exalt, to be set on high, to bear up, whether it's one bearing up their children in their arms. It's also to cause to grow up, to extol, to take up or to set up. Also to take away Israel. Did not Eob say that Yahweh, he provides or he gives? And it also it is Yahweh that room that takes away. It's the same thing, room Israel. To take off or to be taken off, to abolish, to exalt oneself or to magnify oneself. Does not Yahweh magnify himself, Yisrael, and his Torah and his acts um, in the house of Yisrael, his mighty works, even as we were bound in Mizraim, Yisrael, Yahweh, he lifts himself up. Yahweh, he also calls even Pharaoh to bring honor to his name, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back to chapter 7 in Bereshit, Genesis, verse 18. And it says that the waters, the waters prevail and overcome all things. And they were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. It was safe. It was upon the face or above the waters, Israel. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the Olam. And all the high hills, did not it cover all the high hills? Was there anything that extended out of the water, Israel? No, it was all covered. Yahweh, he leaves nothing uncovered when he judges the house of Israel, when he judges the Olam. And all of the high hills that were under the Hoshimayims, they were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains, they were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the old lamb. Seems somewhat crude. Yes, sir. Does not seem how we define or we have been taught by Christianity that Yahweh would do. Yes. But because of the sin of man, because man mocked Almighty Yahweh yes. and what he has done, Yahweh, he brings the judgment, and it destroys everything, Israel. We should allow the judgment of Almighty Yahweh to destroy everything, Israel, that does not please him. Every sin, every thought, every action, every deed, Israel, it must be judged by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And all flesh died that moved upon the old lamb, both the five 
and of the cattle and of the beasts and every creeping thing that creeped upon the Olam and every son of Adam, every son, every woman, every bane, every child, the suckling that nursed upon the breast, they were all destroyed, Yisrael. Yahweh, he did not have pity. And it says also in verse 22, all and whose nostril was the breath of life, the Ruach. Does not the Ruach belong to Almighty Yahweh? Yes. It belongs to him, does it not, Yisrael? Yes. We should be thankful and give told out unto Almighty Yahweh that he gives us breath, Yisrael. Yes. Because just as easily as he gives us breath, he can take it away, Yisrael. Yes. So while we have breath, why should we not extol him? Why should we not lift him up? With all of our being, with all of our strength, Yisrael. Why should we not lift up our hands in the congregation in the presence of Almighty Yahweh? Because he has given us so much, Yisrael. All in whose the nostril of this breath of life and all that was in the dry land, it perished, it died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground. That's everything. The grasses, the herbs of the field. Everything was destroyed. Both sons of Adam, cattle, creeping things, the fowl of the Shemayim were destroyed from the Olam. And only Noah remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark, Yisrael. This ark of safety, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it's the only place where we can enter into Yisrael that shall preserve us, that shall keep us from the wrath or even the judgment of Almighty Yahweh in his hot displeasure. Verse 24, and the waters prevail upon the Olam 150 days, Yisrael. There was nothing that was able to survive that was not in that ark. There's nothing even in this time that shall, be, that shall survive, Yisrael, without us abiding in the ark of safety, this ark, Yahshua HaMashiach. For Yahweh, he has lifted us up by Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. And I barak him today for that. Let us move on to chapter 13 of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1. Have not Yahweh given us riches, Yisrael? He commands us to look, to look up and to look around us, Yisrael. Yahweh has given all things unto his people. To possess the land, the riches, the wealth, the Shemayims. It has been given unto his Zerah, his seed, Israel. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. But we must lift up. We must lift up his standard. We must lift up his judgment. The rod. Moshe, he lifted up the rod, did he not? I will get to that, Israel. We must lift up the rod, the standard. And we must lift it up that we might prevail or that we will prevail in Yahshua HaMashiach. It says in chapter 13, verse 1 of Bereshit Genesis, Then Abram, he went up out of Mizraim, of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. Didn't I say he was rich? That they had plenty. They had much. And he went on his journey from the south even unto Bethel. To the place where his tent had been at the beginning. Between Bethel and Hia. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. He had built an altar or a place to offer up Zabak unto Almighty Yahweh. And there Abram called on the name of Almighty Yahweh. Do we call upon the name of Almighty Yahweh, Israel? Yes. Have there not been an altar or a place where we could bring a Zabak and offer before Almighty Yahweh? So we should speak his name. We should proclaim his name. We should lift up his name. He said he called on the name of Almighty Yahweh. It wasn't a whisper. I don't believe it was a whisper. I don't believe it was in the left of his heart where it could not be heard. I believe he bellowed it out. He lifted up, he extolled the name of Almighty Yahweh. He called on the name of Yahweh. 
And it says in verse 5, And Lot also, which went with Abram, he had flocks and herds and a tent. And the land was not able to bear them, because of, there was so much Israel that they had. That they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. At this time, should this be the will of Almighty Yahweh at this time, Yisrael Yah? He desired Yisrael Yah to dwell together. We should not be set apart by situations or circumstances, Yisrael Yah, or the things we, we deem are important, or, or, or our wealth, or our worth, Yisrael Yah. We should dwell as a house, as a nation, as one people. It says in verse 7, And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. So there was strife, there was envy, there was battlings. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray you, between you and between me, between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. That was wisdom. There should not be strife amongst the house of Israel. We should have one mind, one desire, one heart, and one love, Israel. There should not be no diversities. It is not whole land for you or to separate yourselves, I pray you, from me. He says, if you will take the left hand, and then I will go unto the right. And if you depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, and it was well watered everywhere. So there's plenty of water. There was nothing lacking. Before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Mizraim, as you came to Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. And Abraham, he dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched their tents towards Sodom. And the men of Sodom were very evil, and sinners before Almighty Yahweh exceedingly. Verse 14. And Yahweh said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, to lift up now your eyes. Yahweh is saying unto the house of Israel, Israel, Yah, even at this time, for us to lift up our eyes, Israel, Yah, to lift up our heads. Why? He said, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are northward and southward and eastward and westward. We can do that now, Israel, Yah. We can look around us at the expanse of the Shemayim. For all the land, the writs of this property, which you see, to you will I give it, and to your zira forever. It has been given unto us, Israel. Are we not the zira? Are we not the seed of Abram? Have we not come from the loins of that which Yahweh have chosen, Israel? So the world belongs unto Israel. It belongs unto us. His Torah belongs unto Israel. New Jerusalem belongs unto Israel. But we must look, Israel. We must look up. We must lift up our heads from these low places. We need to stop looking on the ground. Allow our countenance to be fallen, Israel. We must lift up and look. Why? Because Yahweh here has given us all things. Even the enemies, He has given us our enemies, even for us, Israel, to overcome. Even the enemies of our own flesh, Israel. Yahweh has given us the power to overcome. But we must look up. We must look up to his Torah. We must look up to Yahshua HaMashiach. There have there are many of us and those that have older brother or older person in the family which one looks up to Yisrael for comfort, for wisdom, a zakain, that there may be a wealth of understanding that comes from this one which you set on high or that you lift up in your presence, Yisrael. So also, this must be in the house of Yisrael. Yeah. We must lift up Yahshua HaMashiach. We must lift up the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Not tuck it away, not put it on the bottom shelf, 
But it should be ever before us, Israel. Ever present, even in our lives, Israel. And he says in verse 16, I will make your zira as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall your zira be also numbered. He said, Arise, walk through the land and the lit of it and the breadth of it, and I will give it unto you, Israel. Yahweh, he has given us all things. He has given us Yahshua HaMashiach, which is the most precious thing unto the house of Israel. Did not all conditions they sing the song that all we need is in Yahshua HaMashiach? He, he provides. He satisfies. All we need is in him, Yisrael. Yahshua, he's the expanse of all things that Yahweh has given unto the house. Great riches, great wealth. He's a great possession, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So we must not let Yahshua go. We must hold, we must hold unto him, Yisrael, and his commandments. Then Abram, he removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Horeb, and built there an altar, a high place unto Almighty Yahweh. Do we continue? Do we build a high place unto Almighty Yahweh? We should lift him up, Yisrael. We should lift up his name. We should lift up his Torah. It should be the standard, Yisrael, from which we are rooted. And our foundation, Israel. So let us lift him up tonight, Israel. Yeah. Simply lifting our hands before him. Yeah. Lifting our voices. Lifting our eyes before him, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Such a simple thing, but yet such a powerful thing. Yeah. That even when there's nothing to say, Israel, we can still lift up our hands. Yeah. Why? Because we have the victory in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving on to Bereshit, chapter 21, verse 10, 14, I want to read. Hallelujah. We must also lift up our children unto Almighty Yahweh. Do not we offer our bane? We do here at Teshua Community. We lift up our children. We lift it up before Almighty Yahweh. We offer our children unto Yah. That they may be a, a, a help and a strength unto the house, that we train them, that we teach them Yisrael, yeah. that we give them wholeheartedly to the service of Almighty Yahweh, that Yahweh may have his will in their lives, Yisrael. Yeah. It says here in Genesis chapter 21, verse 14, And Abram, he rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar. This is concerning Hagar and the babe, the child putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. This is even an example unto the house of Israel. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs because there was no more hope for this zira or this seed. It was cast out from the, from the house, put away, so to speak, Israel. But yet Yahweh, he had his eye upon this bane and upon this, this, this Isha. And she went and sat down o over against him at far ways off, as it were a bow shot. And she said, let me not see the death of this child. Yeah. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and she wept. Oh, the last time we lifted up our voices before Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. For his mercy. For his sustaining power, Yisrael. Hallelujah. For his deliverance. Hallelujah. We need to lift up our voices before him. Yeah. In prayer, and supplication, wholeheartedly, and she wept. Oh, yes. And what did Yahweh do? It says in seven, verse 17, And Yahweh, he heard the voice of the lad, even of the child that cried, Yisrael. Don't you know that Yahweh, he hears our voice when we cry with supplication as unto him, Yisrael. 
He has not forgot his zira or his seed. He has given his promise and he shall keep it, Israel. He's not going to allow his house to perish. Not one zira, not one anointed one should perish from the house of Israel. And the Malach of Yahweh called to Hagar out of Shemayim and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for Yahweh has heard the voice of the lad where he is. But you know, it's Yahweh that hears our voice even tonight, Israel. And we would just lift up our voice unto Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Is that not what children do? When they sense that their comfort, whether it's their ish, their, their ima or their ava, yeah. Yeah. when there's, it seems like there's no one around, they begin to whimper and begin to plead and cry. Yeah. And there's something about a child and their, with their resolution, Israel. Yeah. They will not stop crying. Yeah. They can cry for hours and hours on end. There's a mechanism or that is a strip that Yahweh has given for a child to be heard. Yeah. That one can come to the rescue of the child. Sure. That one that hears, you don't even have, it doesn't have to be your, even your zero or your seed. But your ears are given unto the welling of that child. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yahweh's ear is given unto our cry, Yisrael. Yeah. Don't think that Yahweh has forgotten us. Yeah. Continue to lift up your voice. Continue to cry out because Yahweh, he shall sin. His deliverance, Israel. But we must lift up our voices unto him. And Yahweh opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. But you know, Yahweh, he provides all that we need, Israel. All we have to do is cry out unto him with a pure and an earnest heart. But you know, the heart of a child, it is earnest and it's sincere. It is pure, Israel. That's why we must be as the children. Our hearts must be pure and honest before Almighty Yahweh. And look what Yahweh did. He provided water. And she went and filled the bottle up with water and gave it to the lad, to the child, to drink. And Yahweh, he was with the lad. And he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and become an archer, skilled. Know where to place the arrows. Should not we be skilled, Yisrael? Yeah. With the armament of Almighty Yahweh that he has given us, yeah. with the sword, with the rod, yeah. with the staff, Yisrael. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him, a wife out of the land of Mizraim. Yeah. If you would turn with me, Yisrael, also to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. For it is Yahweh that hears the cry of his zira, of his people, Yisrael. It's important at this time, Yisrael, that we lift up the standard. We must lift up the rod of Almighty Yahweh. The mathith, the rod, the staff of Almighty Yahweh. Not only does this word staff mean uh, a stick or a rod, but it is also an example of a tribe or the tribes of Israel. Just as Almighty Yahweh out of Yeshai, did not he lift up a rod or a branch out of Yeshai, Yisrael? Let me read that in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, concerning this staff of this rod. Every one of us should hold this staff or the same staff, Israel, of Almighty Yahweh, his judgment. And there came forth a rod out of the sin of Yesi, and a branch shall grow out from his roots. And the Ruach of Yahweh shall rest upon him, and the Ruach of wisdom and of understanding. Should we not have that Ruach, that breath of wisdom and understanding, Israel? Also the Ruach of counsel and might and the Ruach of knowledge and the fear of Almighty Yahweh. And shall make him of quick understanding. Do we have quick understanding? The Torah commands us to be, to, to be wise, to not be unwise, Israel, in this last hour, but understanding what the will of Yahweh is. He said to make him of quick understanding. In the fear of Almighty Yahweh. And he shall not judge after the sight of the eye. 
neither prove after the hearing of his ear. But with Sadiq, with righteousness, shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Did he not say with the rod of his mouth? Did I not also talk about this rod not only being a staff, but also this nation that shall rise up of Almighty Yahweh? It says, with the rod out of his mouth, this rod of judgment, and with the ruach of his lips shall he slay the wicked, Israel. Don't you know there are wicked things in our lives that we should slay, that we should destroy with this rod of judgment that Yahweh has brought forth out of the Zerah of Yeshua, Israel? We must hold this rod, and we must use it wisely, Israel. All the wicked things that are in us, as the Torah continues to purge and to reprove and to show us Yisrael, they must be removed by the rod of judgment. Because it is by this rod it shall slay all those wicked things and bring them into judgment, Yisrael. So we must lift up this judgment in our lives. Hallelujah. That we may walk in the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. If you would turn with me there, Yisrael, Exodus 14, verse 10. Hallelujah. Yahweh has always made a way for the house of Yisrael. Yes, yes, but we must lift him up. Hallelujah. By our walk, yes. by our talk, yes. by our example, yes. that it may bring forth honor to his name. That we lift up his name continuously, Israel. That we not bring dishonor, but honor to his name. Yeah. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel, they lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians, yeah. they marched after them, almost on their heels, Israel, as they fled from Mizraim, Pharaoh's army. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel, they cried out unto Almighty Yahweh. And they said unto Moshe, because there were no graves in Mizraim, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Yes, sir. Wherefore have you dealt with us to carry us forth out of Mizraim? Is it not this, is not this the word that we did, that you did tell us in Mizraim, saying, let us alone? That we may serve the Egyptians? Don't you see where their desires were, Israel? Because of trials, because of circumstances, and similarly, they were not given what they wanted at the time, Israel. They wanted to go back unto Israel. They wanted to go back to the sin, to the bondage, being separated from the presence of Almighty Yahweh. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die here in the wilderness. And Moshe said to the people, fear you not and stand still. Yes, we should fear not in this hour, Israel. Yeah. Even though similarly, Satan comes after us, or the spirit of Mizraim seeks and tries us, or tries to tempt us daily, Israel, yeah. that we should just stand firm yeah. and fear not, that we may see the salvation of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you this day. Yeah. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Yeah. Yahweh shall fight for you, and, and you shall hold your shalom. You shall hold your peace. Yeah. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Wherefore cry you unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Oh, yeah. Why should we Plead unto Almighty Yahweh, where He has always given His mitzvah. He has always given, always, always, already given us Yahshua Hamashiach. So all we have to do simply is to walk after the Torah, Yisrael, and lift up His name and extol Him, because it is He that directs our path, Yisrael. Were they not led by the pillar of cloud by day and by the fire by night, Yisrael? Yahweh, he still leads us in this same manner, Yisrael. But we must lift up our heads that we may see the clouds. 
We must lift up our eyes that we may observe the fire that falls from the windows of the Shemayim, just right, yeah. He said in verse 16, he said, but lift you up your rod. We must lift up the rod, the judgment of Yahweh, Yisrael Yah, just as Yahweh commanded Moshe to lift up his rod. And stretch out your hand over the sea, over the waters, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on, on, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the mist of the sea. Does not Yahweh still work in this same manner today, Israel? As we approach the rivers of the great waters, or even the nations of the world, Israel, Yahweh has set them in our hands. That we should have power and dominion even over the nations of the world, Yisrael. Yeah. They should not trample us over underfoot. Yahweh commands us to lift up his rod or to lift up our rod, Yisrael. Yeah. And it is he that shall make a way, but we must lift up. We must lift up his rod. We must lift up his standard, his judgment, Yisrael. Yeah. And he shall make a way even through the waters. Yeah. Hallelujah. Did he not make a way for, for uh? For um, Noah, even though in the midst of the many waters, he made a way for them to be established and to be set in safety above the waters, Israel. Well, Shell said he also made a way through the water. But we must lift up his standard. We must lift up his staff, Israel. He didn't say hold it to the ground. He didn't say throw it into the sea. He said to uphold it. So we must uphold the word of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. And Yahweh, he shall make a way through any trial, yeah. through any circumstance. Hallelujah. He shall part the waters and make a way for us to walk, even upon dry ground, Israel. You know, we have, we walk, we have walked, walked in mud before. And the mud, it slows you down. It gets you dirty. And if it's that real thick stuff and it's deep, it would even pull the very shoes off your feet. Hallelujah. Don't you know that's what the enemy desires, Israel? Yes. To pull the shoes off of our feet. Yes. That we not stand upon the precious promises of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. That's what he desires. But if we will hold up the rod of Almighty Yahweh and his judgment, then even the enemy will flee. Right. And we will be able to walk in the path of Sadiq that Yahweh intends us to, to walk on, Israel. Not to be slow or trodden down but to move with haste. Yeah. Hallelujah. But lift up your rod and stretch it out over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh. Did not Yahweh say he would get him honor, Israel? He will, not, he will lift up his name and upon all his hosts and upon the chariots and upon the horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh of hosts, that I am Almighty Yah. Oh, yes. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Malach of Yahweh, which went forth before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and the darkness to them, or to the Egyptians. But it gave light by night to these, the house of Israel. So, it came, so that the one came not near the other at night time. So we must lift up the standard of Almighty Yahweh. Because his, his Torah, it is dark. It is not meant to be understood by the wicked. Hallelujah. But it gives light unto Yisrael. Yeah. Yeah. It lights our path. Yeah. It lights our way as we traverse through the wilderness, Yisrael. Yeah. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Hallelujah. We should lift up. We should ruin Israel. We should lift up a standard. 
And that standard is Yahshua HaMashiach. It's obeying his Torah. He commands us to lift up our hands, to lift up our voice in the tabernacle, to lift up our faces, Yisrael. That's where our strength comes from, comes from Yisrael, just obeying, simply obeying the simple instructions of Almighty Yahweh. And there will be nothing that should or can subdue us. And there will be nothing that can hinder us, Yisrael. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no God before me. There is no God. The God of your flesh. The guys that you have built, your homes, your cars, those things that you have extolled and lifted up before Almighty Yahweh. Your mom, your dad, your children, wherever they may be, Yisrael. He said, there is no God before me. Yahweh said, I kill and I make alive. I wound and it is I that heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Once we are in the hands of Almighty Yahweh, there is none that can deliver. Whether it's his hands of safety or whether it's his hand of judgment, Israel, Yah. No one escapes Yahweh's hand. Now listen to this. Even Yahweh, he lifts his hands. He says here, for I lift up my hands to the Shemayans and say, I live forever. Hallelujah. So even Yahweh declares by the lifting of his hands. Lifting of your hands is a proclamation, Israel. Yah. It is an establishment that the Torah of Yahweh is true. Don't you see, even in Mizraim in the world, they lift their hands, even at their base basketball games and their baseball games. They do what's called a wave. Everybody, they stand up out of their sheet, seats and they lift their hands. It is a symbolism of, of worship. But unto Almighty Yahweh, it's of great value, Yisrael, Yah, that we lift up our hands in his tabernacle, that we lift up our hands before him. Because even he had lifted up his hands. He said, and said, for I live forever. And he said, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, he said, I will render vengeance unto my enemies and I will roar shalom to them that hate me. He's just simply saying, I will take them away. I will annihilate. I will destroy them. There is none left. He said, I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of, of, rivet, of revenges upon my enemy. He said, Rejoice, O you nations. With his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and he will render, render vengeance unto his adversaries, and will be merciful to his land, to his people, to his possession, and to his people. Are we not the people of Almighty Yahweh? So it's him that should render judgment unto our enemies. It is him that should wet his sword and his arrows with the blood of those that lift up their hands against Yisrael. Let's read some in Tehillim. Let's see what Dawi had to say about lifting up Yisrael. Hallelujah. We should learn this, Yisrael. We should learn how it shouldn't be a hard thing for us to lift up our hands in the presence of Almighty Yah. Because it is He that lifts us up, Yisrael. For we are a precious treasure unto Him. We are a precious jewel. He has chosen us out of the nations of the world, not because we were great and mighty in number, but because of his steadfast Ahava toward his Zira, Yisraya. It says here in Tehillim chapter 4, verse 1, to the chief musician owned 
Neganoth, a psalm unto Dawid. He said, answer me, O Yahweh, when I call. Don't we want Yahweh to answer us, Israel? Yeah. O Yahweh of my Sadiq, my righteousness. He said, you have enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer, hear my prayer. He said, O sons of men, how long will you turn my splendor and honor to shame and to dishonor? And how long will you love vanity? Why do we love vanity so much, Israel? Those things that fade away, that die, that do not last. And seek after leasing, shalah. He said, but know that Yahweh has set apart him that is Sadiq for himself. Has he not set us apart for himself, Yisrael? He has deemed us righteous even in this generation, just as he deemed Noah. He has set us apart. Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. He says, stand in awe and sin not. Continue with your own love upon your bed and be still, Shalah. He said, offer the sabbat of Sadiq of righteousness, and put your trust in Almighty Yahweh. Is that what we do, Yisrael? Yes. Do we offer up oh, yes. the Sadiq or the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh, and put our Sadiq, our trust, our Pala in him, Yisrael? Yes. He said, there be many that say, who will show us any tough? Yahweh will lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Yes. Don't you know it's Yahweh that lift up the light of the countenance, Yisrael? Yeah? Yeah. He sets that in high esteem, his Torah, his Mishvah. He said, I will lift you up in the light of your countenance upon us. He said, you have put gladness in my love more than in the time that the corn and in the increase of wine. Verse 8. He said, I will both lay me down in shalom and I will sleep. For you, Yahweh, only make me to dwell in safety. Hallelujah. Don't you see what Yahweh, what he does with the house of Yisrael? And we continually to walk in his Torah, Yisrael. He lifts up his countenance of his light, of his Torah, that we may dwell in safety, Yisrael. Move me to chapter 7 and to Helium, verse 1. It says here, O Yahweh, my Almighty. He says, in you do I put my trust. Where do we put our trust tonight, Yisrael? Is it in your Almighty Yahweh? Or is it in the arms of man? Is it in the arms of our own strength, Yisrael? I tell you tonight, it will fail you. But the arms of Almighty Yahweh would never fail us. He said, save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my nephesh like a lion, rending it in pieces. Don't you know that's what the world desires to do? That's what Satan desires to do, Yisrael. He said, while there is none to deliver, O Yahweh, my Almighty, he said, if I have done this, if there be injustice in my hands, yeah. if I have rewarded evil to him that was at Shalom with me, yes, I have delivered him that was without cause unto my enemy. Verse 5, he said, let the enemy persecute my nephesh and take it. Yes, let him tread down my life upon the old lamb. And lay my splendor and honor in the dust, Salah. He said, if I have done wickedly, if I have transgressed your mishvah and your Torah, then it is righteous that my enemies do these things unto me. He says in verse 6, arise, O Yahweh, in your anger. And he said, to lift up yourself because of the rage of my enemies. And awake for me to the judgment that you have commanded. He said unto Yahweh, to lift up yourself, Almighty Yahweh, and your judgment, and your anger, and your rage, Almighty Yahweh. Verse 7, 
So shall the congregation of the people come past you about. For their sakes, therefore, return you on high. Yahweh shall judge the people. He says, judge me, O Yahweh, according to my righteousness. If there's any wickedness, judge me, Yahweh. And according to the integrity that is in me. He said, oh, let the evilness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For righteousness, Yahweh tries the love and the reign. So it's Yahweh that lifts up his judgment, Yisrael Yah. Even upon our enemies. It is Yahweh that lifts up his hands, Yisrael Yah, that shall preserve us and that shall keep us, Yisrael Yah. It is only through the hands of Almighty Yahweh. Chapter 9, verse 1. We're still talking about lifting up tonight, Yisrael Yah. He says, I will praise you, O Yahweh, with my whole love. I will show forth all your marvelous works. I will not hide them. I will make them known, Almighty Yahweh. I will lift up my voice and make known all your marvelous works. He said, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises unto your name, O you most high. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my righteousness, or my right, and my cause. You sit in the throne of judgment, right. You have broken the heathen. You have destroyed the wicked. You have put out the name forever and ever. He says, oh, you enemy, destructions are come to a a perpetual end. And you have destroyed cities. He says, Yahweh, their memorials is perished with them. Verse 7. But Yahweh, he shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. Is not this righteousness the staff of Almighty Yahweh, which he shall use to judge Israel? He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Yahweh also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. Don't you know Yahweh here is our refuge, Israel? Yeah. In times of trouble. Even when the pressures of the world seem to weigh us down. Things seem to press upon our minds and upon our hearts, Israel. It is Yahweh that is our refuge. We shall run to his name, Israel. Even in times of trouble. And they that know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Yahweh, have not forsaken them that seek you. Do we continually seek Almighty Yahweh? Is it his Torah that we meditate both day and night, Yisrael Yah? He says to sing praises unto Yahweh, which dwells in Zion. Don't you know Yahweh, he dwells in Zion? He's amongst his people in his house, Yisrael Yah. Declare among his, declare among the people his doings, where he makes inquisition for blood where he judges. He remembers them. He forgets not the cry of the humble. Did I not talk about the cry? Should we not be humble in the presence of Almighty Yahweh without fight? We should not resist his judgment or his Torah, Yisrael. He said in verse 13, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. He said, you that lift me up, from the gates of death. It is Yahweh that lifts us up from the gates of death, Yisrael. It is Yahweh that gives us life. He gives us breath in the morning. Even as we sleep, it is Yahweh that watch over us, Yisrael. That we said it is you, Yahweh, that lifts me up even from this gate or from this, this death. It is by your power, Almighty Yahweh. Verse 14. That I may show forth all your praises in the gates of the daughters of Zion. He said, I will rejoice in your salvation, in your Yahshua. Should we not rejoice in Yahshua? Yeah. Have not Yahshua taken the keys or the power of death from the grave, Israel? Hallelujah. 
But you know, even at this time, Dawid, he understood even the power of that testimony. He said, because it is, Yah it is Yahweh that lifts me up from the gates of death. It is Yahweh that keeps us, Yisrael. Even from the death of our sins and our transgressions and our shortcomings, by the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach, he has lifted us up, Yisrael, that we not be consumed. To Helium chapter 10, verse 13, as I bring this message to a close tonight, Yisrael, Yahweh commands us to lift up because he lifts us up, Yisrael. So why should we not return, if I may use this expression, the favor, or that's what Yahweh has given unto us? He's not withhold anything from us, Yisrael. He told us to look around. We just look around and see all that Yahweh has done for us, all that he has given unto us, Yisrael. Why would we not want to reward or to give unto Yahweh praises that is due unto his name? To offer up the Zabak of praise, even our own bodies unto him. Not a dead offering. He don't want an offering that is dead, but he want an offering that is full of life, Yisrael. Arise, O Yahweh, Almighty. Lift up your hand. Did I not talk about the lifting up of the hands of Almighty Yahweh, even unto himself? He says, to lift up your hand and forget not the humble. Wherefore does the wicked contempt Yahweh? He has said in his heart, you will not require it. Verse 14. You have sent it, for you behold mischief and spite, and requit it with your hand. He says, the poor commits himself unto you. You are the helper of the fatherless. He said, break you the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. Yahweh, he is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his hand. He said, Yahweh, you have heard the desire of the humble. He said, you will prepare, prepare their hearts and you will cause your ear to hear. Have our hearts been prepared for Yahweh tonight, Yisrael? Yah? Hallelujah. Yahweh, he is always ready. His ear is always prepared to hear the cry of Yisrael. Yah. But we must lift up our voices towards him. We must put our treasures upon those things that are high, Yisrael. Yah. In the Shemayim. We must place all of our cares upon Yahshua HaMashiach. Because it's he that cares for us. Not our hopes and our aspirations in this life or in this world, Yisrael. Yeah. Because if our hopes is in this life or in this world, the things of this life alone, then we, of all men, Yisrael, yeah, are most miserable. We have no hope. There is no deliverance if we desire this, these things of the world. Verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 1. Hallelujah. Isn't Yahweh tough, Yisrael? Yeah? And his mercy endures forever. Psalms 24 and 1. It says that the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. He said in verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of Almighty Yahweh? Or who shall stand in his Kodesh place? He that has clean hands, hallelujah, and a pure left. Let you know our hands have been washed, Yisrael. He has declared unto us to lift up Kodesh hands in his presence. He that has clean, clean hands and a pure and sincere left, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity. Do we lift up our souls to vanity, Yisrael? Is that what we do? Hallelujah. Well, let us at this time lift up Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us not lift up ourselves with pride, closing our ears on, to the Torah and to the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. He said, nor, swear, nor swore deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from Almighty Yahweh and righteousness for Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of his salvation. 
This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek your face, O Yaakov Shalah. He said, lift up your heads. Lift up our heads, Israel. Oh, you gates. And lift you up for you everlasting doors. And the king of splendor and honor, he shall come in. But we must lift up our heads, Israel. We must lift up and open our gates unto Almighty Yahweh, and he shall come in. Who is this king of splendor and honor? It is Yahweh strong and almighty. But we must lift up Yisrael. We cannot allow our countenance to be fallen or to be cast down or have our gates or the gates of our minds or our hearts be closed, Yisrael. We must open them up unto Almighty Yahweh that he may come in. He said, Yahweh, mighty in battle. Verse 9. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the king of splendor and honor shall come in. Who is this king of splendor and of honor? It is Yahweh of hosts. He is the king of splendor and of honor. Is he not the king, Israel? Is he not set on high? So why should we not... Lift up our countenance or our eyes upon him, Yisrael. Through Yahshua HaMashiach, he has given us a way to come boldly. That's what a servant does when, that's what a servant does when he comes before the throne of the king boldly. He looks upon the countenance of the king. He looks upon the presence of the king. So let us look upon the king, our king, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael. For it is he that brings us into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there tonight, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I have a few more pages here, but I'm going to continue this later because there is so much in Torah concerning the lifting up or to lift up. It is a sign of great strength, one that is able to lift up their hands. It also shows forth praises and honor to our King, Yahshua HaMashiach, and to the throne of Almighty Yahweh. It also shows, shows submission unto His will. Hallelujah. So let us come into the presence of Almighty Yahweh with our hands lifted up, hands without sin, without the blood of sin, without contempt, without anything, Israel that we show our submission unto Almighty Yahweh and also our praises unto him. Hallelujah. That should not be a, a, a worrisome thing for us to lift up our hands. Come on, lift up your hands, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And allow the king of splendor to enter in. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, Israel. I pray this message has been a strength unto your left. Just to simply obey the simple things of Almighty Yahweh. Because even the simple things confound even the wisdom of the wise. Yes. Hallelujah. And if we be wise, Yisrael, Yahweh, we'll obey what, Yahweh, what Torah commands us to do. We'll lift up the name of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. We'll lift our hands in his presence. Oh. We'll give him honor. Yes. We'll not be ashamed to extol his name, Yisrael, Yahweh, yes. upon high, because he sits up on high. Yes. He dwells on high, Yisrael, Yahweh, yes. even in the high places of our hearts. Hallelujah. Yes. Let us stand, Yisrael, Yahweh. Hallelujah. We told Yahweh for holding us in his hands, lifting us up and protecting us. And even carrying us, Yisrael, he protects us and he keeps us. Let us shub unto Jerusalem. Almighty Yahweh, we told you for this, this midday scripture truth from your Torah you have given us tonight, Abba Yahweh. And all simpli in simplicity, Abba Yahweh, that we should lift you up, Abba Yahweh. That we should extol your name, Abba Yahweh. That your name should not be zipped from our lips, but your praises shall forever come forth out of our mouths, Abba Yahweh. For it is you that give us breath. It is you that gives us life, Israel. It is you that gives us and lifts us up in the morning, Abba Yahweh. And we barack you for that. We do ask those that listen by via of live stream, you will strengthen them tonight, you will protect them, Abba Yahweh. And those that have came your way to be with us here, that your medicam will be a count round about them. And all things we do, Barak you, and we give you Toda, 
and honor. And we lift up your name and Yahshua HaMashiach. And all things we do will rock you. In the name of Almighty Yahweh, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.